Hey guys, welcome back to Britain Farms Homestead. Oh look, right there is squash bug seed, or seed, <sighs> eggs, squash bug <laughs> eggs. Oh look, there's two of them making babies, making babies on my squash plants, you pests. Look, they act like it's Woodstock out here. Peace, love, and happiness. Come here. Look. Somebody's made a nest in our tomato plant. It is massive. <laughs> it's a, it's a two-hander tomato. Hey guys, welcome back to Britain Farms Homestead. If you're new to our channel and you're like what you see, go ahead, subscribe, like, hit that bell notification so you get a notification every time we put out a video. Today we're gonna do a few things in the garden. I'm gonna pick the cherry tomatoes because I just got a recipe for pickled, spicy, sweet cherry tomatoes. We're gonna can those later. Stay along with me. There's gonna be a later video. Um, you can watch me do that, get the recipe and uh, learn how to do that. But I'm also gonna do a update on the garden and we are going to take care of some squash bugs our squash some of them are looking really good and some of them just look pretty crappy and it's because of the squash bugs we went on vacation we came back the garden needs tilling it needs hoeing there's so many things that need to be done since we went on vacation you leave for four days and you come back and it's chaos but anyway, I'm going to take you on a garden tour of all the plants, weeds, etc. Alright guys, so first of all, this is tomato row down through here. There's one, two, three, three, four. Four rows of tomatoes down through here. Plenty of tomatoes that are all looking great. We got rid of the aphids. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the name oil's working. Um, these are cherry tomatoes in some pots here. Um, these are some cherry tomatoes. These are Roma tomatoes. I think these may be Amish paste tomatoes. One or the other. Anyway, they're good for salsa, all that good jazz. But here's our little cherry tomatoes. Most of them are over here. We have these tomatoes, which are younger than those. And these are determinate tomatoes. And those are indeterminate. But these are all getting scalded by the sun because the plant is not big enough. Let's see if I can find a tomato that's been scalded by the sun. And, and these also are not going to be staked. We're doing a experiment about not staking the tomatoes when they're on plastic and see if they work out okay that way. We'll see. I don't know. Um, I know there's some scalded ones in here somewhere. Right there's one. So this spot right here on this tomato, that's where it's been scalded by the sun. And it'd still be edible, but if you were selling like a market garden or something, it wouldn't be good. And you'll just have to cut that spot out. Oh, here's one that's scalded real bad. So this has been scalded by the sun because this plant doesn't have enough leaves to shade this to keep the sun from scalding it. So that's what sun scalded tomatoes look like. I do not have a tip for being able for that not to happen if your tomatoes are not large enough with the leaves to cover the actual tomato to keep it from doing that. But if you've got one, let me know because I don't know what to do for these tomatoes. We're just gonna eat scalded tomatoes. And I don't think it hurts the taste of them. You just have to cut that piece out and it's kind of a waste, I guess, if it's scalded and you're having to cut it out. Anyway, let's move on. We just have tomatoes galore. And all these may end up being scalded on these little guys right here. I don't know, we'll see. But these indeterminate tomatoes, we have so many tomatoes and they definitely are not being scalded. There's just so many. You can see in there. They're just, we're just gonna have so many tomatoes, which is great and we're okay with that. 
These will be great canning tomatoes. They'll be great big slicers. And these are not like, these are heirloom tomatoes. And this is the indeterminate row. So these tomatoes, how they're lumpy and they have those ridges on them and they're not the regular round tomatoes like say these these are what you're used to seeing in the grocery store well heirloom tomatoes this is what tomatoes used to look like before they were modified and not necessarily genetically modified but grafted to another tomato to make it res disease resistant or pest resistant or bred with another tomato to make it stronger against a disease or a pest. That's what they used to look like. And, un well, not unfortunately, we just, we're not used to seeing that. That's not what they usually have in the grocery store. They usually have the round tomatoes. And when you go to sell tomatoes, it's what everybody wants. But we don't give a hoot. We're gonna eat them, can them. We don't care what they look like, really. As long as they taste good and it's a tomato. So I found something pretty interesting when I was going through these tomatoes. I've pulled some that are starting to turn and I'm just gonna put them on the counter and let them go ahead and finish turning. So I'm checking all of them to see if they have any turning. But I found something pretty interesting in our tomato plants. Look at this. So look at this tomato plant here. Look, somebody's made a nest in our tomato plant. I don't see any eggs or anything. We're just gonna leave it alone and let that little bird do whatever it needs to do um, and raise some babies. So I just found a massive tomato. I don't know if I can show how big this is on camera, but it's huge. It's just green though. And it may rot before I ever get off the vine, but I think it's pretty impressive to have a green tomato this big. Let's see, where'd it go? This one. I don't know if you guys can see how big this tomato actually is, but it's bigger than my hand. It is massive. It's a, it's a two-hander tomato. I've picked the cherry tomatoes and I've come through and I've picked all the tomatoes, the big tomatoes that were turning because we have a lot of tomatoes that look beautiful and then when they almost get ripe, they're rotting on the bottom. I'm not sure what it is. I don't think it's blossoming rot. I don't think it's blight. I don't, I'm not sure what it is and it could be the watering situation because if it rains, it rains, they get water, they get water. We're not watering anymore. It's all in God's hands now, whatever happens to these tomatoes. So that could be the issue. So my tip for shed wars is, if you're having this issue, I can show you what to do to save your tomatoes. And still get a crop of tomatoes anyway. So this tomato is not all the way red. Um, it's not, you know, it could still be on the vine a couple days, but because we're having the issue with the rotting of the tomatoes, when they get red, I picked it before then. So I can take this tomato now, I can set it on my counter in my kitchen in the sunshine, or I can set it on the banister rail of the porch, and this will go ahead and turn red and it will be good and it will not rot. So I've done several of them this way. I'll show you. Here is what I've got. These are the cherry tomatoes. Now I'm gonna pickle these with sweet and spicy cherry tomato pickles is what I'm gonna make out of them. And they, some of these will be green when I use them. I won't use all red ones and some of them be orange. I'll use these just the way they are. I'm not gonna wait for them to ripen up. But like this tomato, it's not ready all the way yet. This tomato is definitely not, but you see it turning red and this one is not, but it's turning and this one's turning. And this one even has a bad spot in it right there, but I'm hoping 
that it's going to be okay now that I've pulled it from the vine and I put it on the, I'm going to put it on the counter in the sunshine. The rest of these don't have any bad spots, but they will if I left them on the vine because I pulled, and this tomato is just lumpy and it's got a bad spot right there. It's just lumpy as it can be. I have no idea what happened to that one, but. And this one, it's turning on the bottom, but it has no bad spots in it. And this one was turning, so I went ahead and picked it. So my tip is, if you have the rotting tomatoes when they're turning, starting to turn red. Now, the reason I don't think it's blossom in rot is because that usually happens way before they start to turn red. Like, they'll start rotting green on the vine. These are mostly rotting when they start to turn red. They look fine when they're green, and then when they turn red, they're starting to rot. And I think it's the watering situation, but the watering situation is what it is, and we don't have drip lines, and we have so much out here now, there's no way we can water everything. We did that when they were small. Now it's just a, up to Mother Nature if we get a lot in or what. Uh, but anyway, that's my tip for shed wars. And now that we're in Pepper Lane, I'll show you our peppers. So these are orange bell peppers. This is almost a full row of orange bell peppers. This is orange bell peppers. And I believe at the very end of this row, there's like six or seven plants that are red hot chilies, I believe. But most of these, have peppers on them. There's some little ones. Oh, there's some big ones. Oh, look, this one has a, this one is rotting on the bottom just like the tomatoes were. Oh, this one was rotting on the bottom just like the tomatoes were. I really think it's a watering thing, but that one's no good. See, it's all nasty on the inside. We're just gonna chunk it. But here's one that looks okay. No rotting. There's one that looks okay. There one that looks okay. When this one turns orange, which won't be long, I don't think, it'll be ready to eat. Um, there's one, it looks okay. So we have lots of tomatoes, uh, tomatoes, peppers, bell peppers. Um, we hope our tomatoes do well. This is our second planting of corn here. Our first planting of corn is on the other end of the garden. I also wanted to do an update on our gladiator challenge that um, buy something from a store and plant. So my strawberry seeds, there's something coming up in that container. I'm not sure what it is because I don't know what strawberries look like when they're that small. Could be a weed for all I know. We'll wait and see. But we're out at the garden and I don't have them with me. I was just giving you an update on that. But I do have an update on the sweet potatoes that I got. And I started slips from the grocery store sweet potato. And I planted those and they are looking okay. So, and this is, I planted in a pot. We had to plant something in a pot. This is in a pot. All my potatoes are in a pot. Those are not sweet potatoes. Um, there's red potatoes and there's golden potatoes but I'm growing all my potatoes in pots. <laughs> but these are from my potato slips from the grocery store. Um, and this is a purple sweet potato. It doesn't look like it's doing so well. This is what I actually planted here. But another one has shot up and it looks way better. Looks like something's eating it. You notice all my marigolds in here put marigolds in here hoping to keep something from eating them. This is also from the store-bought sweet potato. And this is also from the store-bought sweet potato. So the potatoes are looking okay. Um, we have okra. There's two rows of okra here. There's one here and there's one here. And like I said, we need to run the tiller through this garden. And this row right here, most where it's really grown up, there's nothing there. It didn't come up or there was radishes or beets that we took up. 
and haven't planted anything back, we're gonna replant that in something, but we need to turn that up with the tiller. This is our kohlrabi. I have never planted kohlrabi before, but this is the kohlrabi, and it looks like it's doing well, other than it needs to be weeded. So we went on vacation for, I don't know, four or five days, and it rained here. It rained here for two of the five days we were gone, and then we came back to a garden that looked like this. This garden was hoed and tilled up and was pretty much, didn't have a bunch of weeds until we came back. Anyway, there's a lot of weeding to be done. So now I'll take you down squash row. And I'll show you those blasted squash bugs we gotta get rid of. Anyway, this is my spaghetti squash, I believe. Yes, this is my spaghetti squash. Got a spaghetti squash coming on right there. More weeds that need to be taken up. Oh look, right there is squash bug seed, or seed. <sighs> eggs, squash bug <laughs> eggs. And that means there's probably a squash bug on here somewhere. Let's find him. Oh look, there's two of them making babies. Making babies on my squash plants. You pests. Look, they act like it's Woodstock out here. Peace, love, and happiness. Come here. Oh. So I bothered them. Oh, jeez. I dropped that one. So this is a squash bug. And see if I can get him to be still a minute. And turn around so the sun's not shining on you. This is a squash bug. Ew. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna get rid of these squash bugs and we're gonna get rid of these organically. So I'm gonna do that in another video. So if you wanna know how to get rid of these pests organically, just hang around there's gonna be another video how to get rid of these squash bugs organically and save your squash but anyway oh look we got a squash let's pick it look at there guys we got a squash let's see if we got any more now this is probably our fifth squash out of the garden, but we have a great big family. So five squash doesn't feed us. We got more squash coming on right here. With squash bug eggs. <laughs> Some over there. So five squash won't feed our family, so we have to mix potatoes or onions or something in there. Here's another one ready to pick. There's another squash. We got two squash, and just for the heck of it, I'm gonna pick this one right here. And I picked three, that one, one small one is pretty small, but I picked it because when we mix potatoes and onions with it, it's gonna taste more like squash with more squash in it. And these are my zucchinis, they just look so this is my zucchini right here. They do have some blooms, but the plants are so tiny and pitiful. And they need to be weeded. I know, I should be ashamed of all this grass in here. And maybe that's why too. Maybe they just didn't want to grow because of the grass, but at one point in time there was no grass in here and they just didn't grow. Uh, I don't know. And those are blooming. But they're like that all the way down there. This is our first planting of corn. And as you can see, some of it is tossling. And it won't be long for the rest of it's tossling. And remember, 
I was telling you guys about uh, you can plant two different kinds of corn. You just want to session plant them so one will tossle and pollinate before the other tossles. This is just to prove what I was saying. This corn that we planted first is tossling now. Not all of it, but it will be. See, you can see that this one, the tossle hasn't got it out yet, but it's going to. But it's tossling, which means it's pollinating. And this is our second planting of corn over here. And it's a different kind of corn. That's a straight yellow sweet corn. This is peaches and cream corn. So this is nowhere near time to toss them. So it's not ready to be pollinated yet. And it was planted, I wanna say three weeks behind that. So this one is going to tossle, it's going to pollinate, it's gonna be done with, and then this one will start. And we just planted two more half rows of peaches and cream corn here. We could have planted it all at the same time, but we could make up our minds what we wanted. But anyway, we got two more half rows. We're going to plant some more zucchini and some more cucumbers. Our cucumbers are doing horrible. I have no idea why. But I can take you a look at them. And our beans, I can show you our beans. We already, our cucumbers are doing horrible. Not sure why, but I can show you our cucumbers and our beans. We've already got our first picking off our beans. Our beans aren't doing too well either. I don't know. It's like this end of the garden is just doing pretty crappy. I don't know why. But anyway, we've already got our first picking of green beans off this row right here. And there's some more beans in here. They're not quite ready to get off these. We're gonna plant more green beans too, because this definitely is not enough. See, these aren't quite ready, even though we've already picked these. And these guys, they have plenty of beans on them too, but they're not ready. This row and that row. We have three half rows of green beans. Let me show you these pitiful little cucumbers. So these are our little cucumbers, and I guess they, I guess these cucumbers look okay, but they should be way bigger than this now. They've been planted so long. And that one may be gonna be put on the bloom there, but these cucumbers should be way bigger than this. Uh, I'm not sure what's holding them up. And here's one that's blooming, and look how tiny it is. It's just, they're just not growing. I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't have an answer for it. I've never had trouble growing cucumbers before, so it just doesn't make sense to me. Because cucumbers are usually one of those things we can just toss out there and boom, they do their thing. Now this cucumber looks better than the rest of them. Look, and none of the weeds have been pulled out from around it. Maybe that's its problem. They want the weeds. Jeez. but it still should be a lot bigger than what it is. But it's got some blooms on it. Even has got a little runner there. Well, you do your thing, little cucumber. We appreciate if you do. We wanted to plant some more cucumbers because we wanted to make some pickles, green beans. We already replanted some corn. We gotta replant some zucchini. Oh, that's kinda the garden go through today that's what we've got going on um if you guys have any suggestions of why my cucumbers aren't growing let me know if you have any suggestions why my tomatoes are being all wonky and deciding to rot when they turn red let me know i really think it's a water issue but if you think it's something else put it down in the comments below and if you're new to our channel and you're like what you see Go ahead, subscribe, like, hit that bell notification so you get a notification every time we put out a video. And 
God bless you all. See you next time.